woods, the lovely bluebell woods on a May weekend, summer's morning, with the bird sound, the bluebells, I can hear woodpeckers, and lots of little garden birds today. So I have with me a client, Verity. Uh, we're going to be doing an Indian head massage. How are you feeling about that? Yeah, really looking forward to it. Oh, good. During the treatment, you may well see colours behind closed eyelids. And they're beautiful rainbow colours. Uh, just really relax. Lovely, comfortable breathing. And I'll slowly bring you into it and slowly bring you out of it. Okay? Lovely, thank you. Okay, Verity, take three nice long breaths. So first of all, after three sweeps of a C and a backward C over each shoulder blade, we're now massaging with the thena, the base of the hand, around the soft tissue of the scapula on the left side. Warming, introducing movement relaxation to the area, encouraging the muscle to relax and let go of any tension. Using the thenar muscle now on the right side, especially over the trapezius muscle, coming down, feeling the edge of the bottom of the scapula, warming more fully movement into the top, an area that can feel a lot of tension, and then in between the spine and the shoulder blade bone, and up again, and then transferring the weight to the ends of the fingers, all the finger pads together, especially over the muscle of the trapezius, as I call it, the swimmer's muscle. This area right here in between the shoulder length and the neck can be quite pronounced on swimmers as they do the breaststroke. It really works that muscle, tones it, very strong trapezius. This is an area we use every day, whether we're making a cup of tea, lifting the kettle, or whether we're carrying shopping bags. It's, it works for us every day. Yeah, so the area is now going nicely soft, ready for a little bit more Indian head massage technique. Coming around to the other side, again using the ends of the fingers from the shoulder point here, across to the neck, down the side of the spine, but not on the spine, switching my fingers to point downwards, and then tracing that line under the bottom of the scapula 
feeling the point of those wings and then upwards and now those three smoothing massage techniques smoothing the agitation, the activity that has happened over those areas, smoothing the muscle, the soft fascia out again. Lovely, this is the perfect top for it. So now just coming with my knuckles of my index and middle finger, each side of T1, thoracic one, which is that knobbly bone in the base of the neck. And I'm using my other hand to secure Verity so she doesn't feel pushed forward on this lovely hill. And just pressing very gently into this area. This can feel quite sore, almost bruised here. Even though it's not a bruise, but it can feel like there's constant tension there and when pressed like this even gently it, it, it can smart it can feel like you, you've had an injury there and it's because the muscle is in spasm because it's trying to hold this very heavy neck up this very heavy head and neck and so just feeling the nature of this T1 at the moment. I'm just tuning into the energy and the tightness or not of this muscle and bone area. And now just tuning into Verity's breathing. So as Verity breathes out, I just press a little more and then relieve the knuckles, come down and wait for the breath again and gently press. So I'm actually underneath each vertebra at the space where the disc would be. And it really helps as a therapist to tune your breathing in line with your client. And you probably find that it happens anyway, just naturally. So I'm just gently pressing underneath each vertebra before the start of the next vertebra with my knuckles and I'm getting a sense of whether I need to press more or less and whether I bring in the point of my knuckles or whether I bring in more of the part of my finger above the knuckle. So you're always sensing how much to give. Sometimes I actually stay in a position for more than one breath, maybe two or three breaths if I feel that the person needs more attention at that part of the spine. Coming back to the smoothing C. Lovely. 
Now I'm going to be doing some percussion movements over the top of the shoulder, back and forth, using actually not just the sides of my little finger and hand, but bringing more fingers into play. And that helps the feeling for the receiver. It shares the load, spreads the weight, so that it's not quite so harsh when you're bringing more fingers in. You notice I'm using my body weight back and forth rather than my hands and arms so much. That helps you as a therapist to balance and not strain your own shoulders and trapezius. Lovely, so this is a hacking technique. And now on to cupping. So using my hands like cups, forming little bowls. Sometimes this can sound like horses' hooves. Gently cupping on a road. And this is a very nice feeling for the receiver. The wonderful thing about it is it's unpredictable. The receiver doesn't know where the cups are going to go next. It's a nice speedy action. And they just can only do one thing and that is relax. to the smoothing action. It's so lovely here in the bluebells. I can hear all sorts of animal and bird sounds. We heard a Chinese water deer earlier. And now I can hear some woodpecker sounds. We're surrounded by numerous trees, so you'd never be able to spot it. And then just warming into those shoulders, picking them up. I'm not pinching, I'm just picking up the whole muscle area of that trapezius up to the shoulder point and round. Now coming up to the top of the shoulders from that middle point between the scapula. So nice and firmly in an upward triangle, always pushing upwards and actually scooping that muscle between my fingers and thumb. And then a little bit higher, shorter line of triangle and then lower. So I'm actually touching the top of the scapula here, just the edge of it. Coming up. Oh yeah, I can feel a couple of clicks on the left side. So that's good, it's getting rid of that tension there. Lovely, oh this feels really good. Coming up over that middle line again and then back up to that top little line within the triangle, an upside down triangle. Fantastic. Now I'm going to work my way a little bit higher over the shoulders, each side of the base of the neck using my thumbs symmetrically. 
in a parallel motion going forwards, always pushing the pressure forwards in this case, and then an inch further apart. This feels good there, lots, lots of muscle to work with. And an inch further apart again. This is about the bra line area, which can be more bony. It can feel quite sore on some people. And then further still, over the very bony shoulder point and the deltoid. And now, coming backwards using my fingers, so mainly the index finger, but actually all the fingers come into play here, helping the index finger to bring its strength backwards. And then over, back over that bra line again. And one nearer, not quite at the base of the neck yet. And then even nearer. Raw, wonderful, right at the base of the neck. This can feel quite sore here. So use your weight compassionately in a caring motion. Really feel into what your client is feeling here. You might be doing this for your wife or hubby, for a best friend, for a daughter or son, or for a grandparent. So lovely to be able to give. So lovely to be able to help someone and make them feel better. And now bringing the whole of the femur muscle and the, the base of the hand forward, starting at the base of the neck, coming forwards in this fashion, securing the person so you're not pushing their whole body, but you're simply pushing that trapezius muscle over. That should feel really nice. And then again, returning the action over all four levels of the shoulder, three or four times, and then back over the bra line, and the shoulder points. Super, feels really good. Just picking the shoulders up now. Now I'm going to bring my arms in without pushing Verity off this hill and then pushing shoulders down, a lot of pressure and down the arms. Coming forward, weight down rolling my hands so you've got more action than just the movement of your arm and down. Really nice to roll your hands once you've got into the motion of this lovely technique so that there's even more massage going on over the top of the shoulders than just the movement of your arm, the whole arm. Lovely. And now some elimination technique. Letting go. Letting go. Letting go. Letting go. Fantastic. This is where 
of my index and middle finger each side of T1, thoracic one, which is that knobbly bone in the base of the neck. Coming up. Oh yeah, I can feel a couple of clicks on the left side. So that's good. It's getting rid of that tension there. Really nice to roll your hands once you've got into the motion of this lovely technique so that there's even more massage going on over the top of the shoulders than just the movement of your arm, the whole arm. Okay, so coming up to the arms, just smoothing them first of all with the pressure upwards, softly down and trying to cover as much of the upper arm as possible. Massaging up, warming those arms. Nice soft top that I'm going over here. This is the perfect top to use with a, a nice neck around it. And now I'm going to be rolling the tricep that I'm grabbing at the back forwards rolling that tricep forwards three or four times across its length and repeating the whole movement about three times and then scooping the bicep outwards just being careful not to touch the body here so you're scooping you're grabbing the bicep and pulling it out and this has the action of opening the breastbone it has this lovely freedom action of opening at the chest it feels really lovely to have that done to you it's nice to do it for yourself as well but really nice to have this done opening that chest breastbone lovely another couple of s smoothing action upwards now I'm going to come round holding the arm and hand very gently and then, oh very good there it is managing to give me the full weight of her arm and shoulder this is really difficult to do as a receiver but managing really well so what I'm trying to do here is just get some mobility into that shoulder joint here which also helps the elbow and the wrist sometimes with some people you might get um, shoulders arms that click at that point but no this is really good yeah of course Verity is nice and young hasn't got age to cause all those clicks that's good. I think mine might be clicking now. That's lovely. And then allowing the weight to descend down to the lap. And I'm going to come around, pick up the elbows and drop them. Come around and drop. And drop one more time. Ah, oh, lovely. Letting that weight descend let go one more smoothing action and now coming up to the neck so I'm just making sure the neck is covered doesn't matter if there is uh, some neck on show it really helps actually to go along the hairline without pulling hair if possible so I've just used my thumb forwards along that occipital line which is the bone at the base of the back of the, the head then I'm going to use my finger forwards towards me and then the thumb further down and further down and then the fingers pulling backwards nice and smoothly over Verity's top 
and now it's more difficult and of course I'm holding the whole head with my wrist, forearm and hand and working my base of my right hand forwards over the side of the neck. Lovely. Now coming round the other side. Working my thumb forwards, first of all at the base of the head, base of the neck, a little bit further up, further up still, still on the the clothing, and then into that occipital line. Really lovely. This is an area that can be full of tension and therefore pain or soreness when when being touched. Then my finger working backwards. And then the whole hand coming forwards at that base of the hand, coming forwards. Yeah, nice and warm there now. Now I'm just going to take the clasp out of the hair, leave it loose, beautiful hair. And I'm just going to work underneath the base of the hairline at the occipital line with a row of fingers and holding the head with the other hand and forearm so that it doesn't jangle too much. And it doesn't matter if you actually work through the hair or even if there's no hair at all, just massaging in a rubbing action under that bone line. You feel there's a, a sort of ridge there. It feels really nice to have this massaged, massaging all of that pain away. I'm in the sunshine here, it's nice. And you might feel your client loosens their tension right now and really gives their body, their head, the weight of their body to you. So you might find that you need to support and reassure them a little bit more at this stage. Of course, you're pushing quite a lot as well. And it's nice when they just give themselves to you and you are allowed to support them. I can hear a great tit. Okay, so loosening the hair off and I'm just going to do one more neck treatment working with one finger in the little gap that's in the center back base of the scalp. There's a little gap there, a little orifice where I'm rocking very gently the head back and forward, nice and slow. Oh, that's fantastic. <gasps> Amazing. Wow. So having done one finger in the center, I'm now going to use thumb and index finger either side of that uh, gully in, in the middle. So the other side of the muscle there, there's another little gully and I'm pressing forwards as the head comes back and it releases. This is such an important acupressure point and it releases so much tension. Oh, really good to just take a few breaths here. Oh, I can feel the tension going in this beautiful sunshiny woodland glade full of bluebells and birdsong.
And up again. I almost feel like Verity doesn't want to leave that place. And then back one more time for the last meridian that we're activating at the base of the head. So I'm even further apart now. Lovely, really good. Okay, so now coming up to a nice neck release on one side. Just gently supporting the head while just rocking, like bouncing that other shoulder downwards. Trying not to put too much pressure on. Just being aware of how that must feel to them. Just bouncing that shoulder down while supporting the head. And hopefully that's stretching that side of the neck. Just coming around doing it another couple of times on this side. Lovely, that's good. Maybe holding it there for another couple of seconds. And down. Lovely. Back to the spine and the shoulder blade bone and up again a couple of clicks on the left side so that's good it's getting rid of that tension there really nice to roll your hands rolling that tricep forwards Opening the breastbone has this lovely freedom action. Give me the full weight of her arm and shoulder. This is really difficult to do as a receiver, but managing it really well. And drop one more time. Ah, oh, lovely. And now coming up to the neck. Forwards over the side of the neck really lovely this is an area that can be full of tension and therefore pain or soreness when when being touched and then the whole hand coming forwards at that base of the hand coming forwards in the rubbing action under that bone line you feel there's a, a sort of ridge there feels really nice to have this massaged, massaging all of that pain away. Oh, really good to just take a few breaths here. Oh, I can feel the tension going. Just bouncing that shoulder down while supporting the head. Now working on the scalp massage, bringing the hands to the top of the head, tuning into the energy what's going on inside this lovely person and how can you help and then a lovely smoothing technique using the whole hand while supporting the head with the other hand 
So smoothing in a wave-like motion from the front to the back of the whole scalp, even over the parting, changing hands and then coming back. That's it, over the whole scalp. And then using fingers in the same pattern. So using the ends of fingers, maybe slightly more into the finger pads if you feel necessary. Over from the front to the back. Yeah, sometimes an area will need the ends of the fingers, more the finger points. Sometimes an area will need the finger pads. So use your intuition as to what is required. Especially nice over the ear area, the temporal bone and all the soft fascia above that. There are a lot of lymph nodes in the skull around this area, around the ear, neck and throat area. And so you're clearing the lymph nodes, you're helping them be activated, stimulated, so they can do their job better and help you have a strong immune system. Fantastic. And now I'm going to use a combing technique using the very ends and the nail of my fingers in a backward motion, working through the hair one section at a time, sometimes rolling over the hair, sometimes rolling through it. Especially nice down the side behind the ear, picking up, scooping the hair backwards. Lovely. Combing, just gently moving the hair out of the way. This has a real soporific effect on the body, the mind. Really relaxing. Lovely. The hair is looking wonderful. And now some plucking. So, just with two fingers in a random, unpredictable manner, picking up small pieces of hair very close to the scalp. In fact, so close that sometimes you're just gently brushing against the scalp as well as picking up the hair. And the wonderful thing about this is, again, so unpredictable as to where the therapist is going to put their hands, their fingers next, that all the body can do is relax. the hairline particularly nice over the ears again behind the ears back of the head lovely 
Come back to that smoothing action. Smoothing, smoothing back. Lovely. Smoothing. And now a very light touch coming from the front to the back, hardly touching at all. And this is very nice whether you have a lot of hair or very thin hair or no hair at all. It has a beautiful sensation of minimal touch, very light touch. Now I'm going to come to the side of the head with three fingers and just hold quite firmly. I'm supporting the head on the other side and release. And then the next section, about an, an inch further back. And the next one, just behind the ear, on that bone, the temporal bone. Re repeating the exercise on the other side. And then holding the whole head, just supporting on one side and holding with the other hand and bringing, if you like, you're trying to move the soft fascia over the bone, even if it's a millimetre, you're just trying to move it upwards. And the same the other side, just trying to move that fascia over the bone. And I notice when I'm giving Indian head massages that those people that have quite a stressful life find, I find that the fascia doesn't move very easily, but an Indian head massage does manage to bring such relaxation and relief and tension release to those people. And they... The harder our lives seem, the tighter this area seems to be in people. So that's lovely. It's moving nicely at the back. And now I'm just moving on that frontal bone of the forehead and the very top of the forehead and the top of the head. Lovely. This feels so good. Finishing off the scalp with some smoothing action again. Just reassuring, stabilizing, providing security, reassurance and love. So now coming round to the face, the beautiful face. And I'm just holding the chin with both hands symmetrically, spreading my hands and my arms wider, very gently in contact with the jawline. And then the cheeks. And I'm bringing my upper body forward so that the head is very gently leaning against my body. And then it has a sense of being held so it won't be pushed too far backwards. And then the forehead. 
widening my hands, releasing that tension in the frontal bone that can cause headaches and migraines, letting it go, letting it go. And coming round to the, the chin, very gently with my thumb pads, working in a line away from the center point. So I'm gently bringing my index finger underneath and my thumb over, gently squeezing between them along the jawline. And then the finger stretching away, tracing that same jawline to rid any tension that's been agitated. Now working with three fingers each side of the, the nose, working in one movement outwards, pressing with the finger pads outwards towards the temporal bone. That was a really big bee. <laughs> and now working with three fingers again from the center line away along the forehead using the pads of my fingers into the hair and repeating the action from the center coming out and once more very gently clearing that line and now along the brow line one finger below the eyebrow and one above and between them just working into a tiny little line massage working between the fingers very gently from the center outwards And now back to the smoothing, outwards, over the cheeks, and over the forehead. I can't leave out the ears. Working a little bit into the ears, the ear lobes, into the cartilage and the front of the ear and the, the skin around the ears, the back of the ears underneath and then a whole ear massage. So nice to relieve any tension in and around the ears. Okay. Now working with the chakras is tuning into the energy at the heart center.
tuning into the green or the pink energy emanating from the heart center, Anahata Chakra. I'm feeling a lot of love, a lot of healing, a real warmth. Now raising my hand just in front of the throat for the Vishuddhi Chakra, the throat chakra. Feeling the blue energy like a waterfall of blue bubbling liquid clearing and cleansing freedom of expression and the breath feeling that sense of wrapping a blue scarf around your throat Coming up to the third eye chakra, just in front of the, the forehead. Mm, gorgeous purple light. Deeply spiritual. Deeply spiritual. Deeply connected and intuitive. <sighs> connected with all of nature as one. Beautiful. Now coming up above the head for the crown chakra, white light powering from above down through the crown of the head, through the body, cleansing, protecting, surrounding the whole body, feeling feeling that all is well, all is as it should be. And now coming back down to the shoulders, just gently squeezing into the shoulders, very gently bringing myself back round as well. That was quite a deep treatment. And then in order just to bring the body back into these beautiful woodlands again, coming back to that smoothing massage of the C shape around each shoulder blade very gently and then just a squeeze along the shoulder line and a release <sighs> okay so how do you feel yeah, great. That was amazing. Yeah? yeah. You look a bit dreamy. <laughs> yeah, I'm half asleep. <laughs> so I've really enjoyed doing that for you in this beautiful setting. And it, it meant that we could listen to the birds and 
watch well I could watch you probably had your eyes closed but I could watch the breeze through the woodland and try and identify all those different birds you know your birds don't you so yeah so thank you very much for joining us and it's been lovely to have you watch along okay bye guys Right now.